For a few seasons, the talk around the Houston Texans was about whether or not they were finally actually going to break through that glass ceiling and actually make the playoffs. Well, now you're looking at the Houston Texans as a team that's made the playoffs two straight years, and now it's a question of breaking through that next glass ceiling of whether or not they can actually do any real damage once they can actually make the playoffs. I still think this is the team to beat in the AFC South, and I still think they are a contender in the AFC in general. I really do. But their window to win is closing. You look at them, they're a team where some of their big players, such as Matt Schaub and Andre Johnson, aren't getting any younger, meaning that the opportunity to win is right here, right now. Looking at this ball club first offensively, when you look at Matt Schaub, he's a guy that he has games that he puts up big numbers, and then he sometimes, it seems like, especially against good opponents, he kind of wilts under the pressure a little bit. Sometimes I think that's been the fault of the Texans for not doing a better job of uh, giving him more weapons and more options to work with in the passing game. Sorry, Kevin Walter for years as your number two just was not going to get the job done, and ultimately it did not get the job done. But it's still going to be incumbent upon Matt Schaub to have to do more. He's going to have to step up his level of play. The time is now. Before his skills start to erode and deteriorate, he's got to stay healthy, play the whole season, and be able to take that next step up to be considered maybe a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Now, when you look at it, he's got plenty of help surrounding him, especially in the running game. Arian Foster and Ben Tate may very well be the best one-two combination of running backs in the entire National Football League. Foster's a stud, and Ben Tate probably isn't all that far off. Ben Tate would start for a number of NFL teams, except for the fact that he's backing up Arian Foster. Now, it's a nightmare for fantasy football owners of an Arian Foster or a Ben Tate, because they don't know who's going to get what in terms of carries, whatever, but from from an NFL team standpoint, in a real life standpoint, it's a great luxury to have two running backs like Arian Foster and Ben Tate. Looking at the passing game, they finally, the Texans, for the first time in 10 years, finally drafted a wide receiver in the first round. You would think for a team that 10 years ago drafted Andre Johnson third overall out of Miami, as successful of a pick that was, a guy who's a borderline Hall of Famer, who's been the best player in the history of that organization, has really in a lot of cases been the face of that organization for the past 10 years. You would have thought at some point in time they would have rolled the dice again and drafted a receiver in the first round, but they always neglected it. They ignored it. They focused on other positions, especially on the defensive side of the football in the first round, but they finally drafted a complimentary number two wide receiver in DeAndre Hopkins in the first round this year. They finally got it. It might be too late, but Hopkins is a guy that could step in this year and contribute opposite an Andre Johnson. And with guys like Posey and Martin, you're looking at a Houston Texans team that has much more to offer in the passing game now, which is something they've needed for a long period of time, something that can help Matt Schaub even more, especially with still having a serviceable to good tight end in an Owen Daniels. Defensively, this unit is pretty good. Uh, you get Brian Cushing back, and he just signed a big long-term extension, so that's obviously going to help. We'll see if he comes back to form quickly from his knee injury. But J.J. Watt's a freaking beast. He's a man. He is a monster. And to see what he did last year, in a 3-4 defense as a defensive end is just ridiculous. His level of performance in a 3-4 last year was very reminiscent of some, something you would see out of a Reggie White or a Bruce Smith in terms of the talent and production that those guys could potentially produce out of a 3-4. Even though Reggie White usually always played the 4-3, if he had played a lot of 3-4, he would have been dominant in a 3-4. Bruce Smith played a lot in a 3-4 and was dominant in a 3-4. And then you saw what J.J. Watt did in the 2012 season. Just absolutely ridiculous. This is a team that they need guys like Kareem Jackson and Whitney Merciless, former first-round picks, to improve, to contribute more. They need Ed Reed to come in and provide some leadership and fill the gap that's being left by Glover Quinn leaving in free agency and going to Detroit. This is still a good defensive unit. It may not quite, quite be a great defensive unit, but if they can get Cushing back to full strength, if they can get Merciless and Jackson to play like first-round picks, this could be a really, really damn good Houston Texans defense that could definitely win them some ball games. Like I said, in the AFC picture overall, Houston's right in that picture in terms of the top three or four teams in the conference. They really are. And some of the games you're going to want to watch to see how they're going to be this year. You've got week four, they go to Baltimore. Week or excuse me, week three, they go to Baltimore. Week four, they host Seattle. Week five, they go to San Francisco. Week 13, they host New England. These are some big time non-divisional games that 
a team like Houston needs to win two, if not three of, because they could potentially be looking at it from their standpoint, banging with maybe the New England Patriots and especially the Denver Broncos to get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. If they want to do that, they're going to have to beat some of these good teams. They're going to have to beat the defending Super Bowl champs. They're going to have to beat one of the favorites in the NFC to win it all in the Seattle Seahawks. Last year's Super Bowl loser in the San Francisco 49ers. Last year's AFC Conference runner-ups in the New England Patriots. These are the type of teams that the Houston Texans are going to have to beat if they truly, truly want to establish that themselves as, excuse me, as a force and as a team to be in the AFC, I think they're going to win 11, maybe 12 games and win this division comfortably, at least this year. But that window of opportunity overall for the Houston Texans to win and win it all is closing very rapidly.